There was another green that I had. It'll be, I'll be pretty interesting. About a couple of days after the last one, I just loaded up the Merritt Valley. This dream was on the 18th, 11-18-2013 I dreamt it. You know, I've just decided to load up some of the dreams that I've had. The name of this dream was Mr. Bledsoe. I'm going to just read the dream and then we'll look at interpreting. 11-18-2013 I dreamed I was somewhere when I was told to go to Mr. Bledsoe's house. I said I didn't know why. Then it said if you're ready for a change in the weather, restoration and spirit, go to Mr. Bledsoe's house. And remember the second awning. Well, I went. It was a farmhouse on the north side. I said, oh, those two awnings. A voice said again, yeah, the voice said again, not the second awning covering the area, but the one sitting on the ground. I saw two aluminum awnings laying on the ground. I lifted up the second one. I saw a water well under it. And a voice said, look behind you, there'll be a fishing pole and bait. I looked and there was, and I dropped bait. I dropped bait down and instantly I been, began catching crappie and a man came outside and he said, I'm Mr. Bledsoe. I was told you were coming and asked me where the fish biting. As I was catching fish as fast as I could throw bait down, in less than 10 minutes I caught 30 crappie. The man said, Chad, remember from now on these words, second awning. It's always under the second awning, always. Mr. Bledsoe said, Chad, enjoy your fish. I hope you enjoyed fishing in the water well. Then the man said, so Chad, you've been wanting to go to Georgia. The wind, you remembered it. I'm it. And it said, I will show you something else, but beforehand, out of practice, will come to mind. It matters not. Remember still the second awning. It comes forth. We walked to another building about 200 yards away. I saw a highway beside it. No traffic on it. Just a long, straight road with regular road markings on it. And Mr. Bledsoe said, Chad, this is your highway. It has your name on it. And I'm about to open up this building. And then it said, gird up your emotions like Bible would say, gird up your loins. Or equally get ready. You're going home. And I was living in Oklahoma at the time this was dreamed. And he said, Chad, you're going home. The man said before he slid the door back to reveal the truth, he said, don't doubt the emotion. Ready, it's yours. He slid the door back, and then I saw a Satabria tailwheel airplane sitting there. Instantly I said, not a problem. I remember back to the occurrence years back and then Mr. Bledsoe said I remember it and it's ready and then out of practice is a problem and he told me to go to Georgia but save the last mile then it was like a strong spiritual wind instantly everything came back to me I took off I said, it's easy. I haven't landed in a while, but slow and easy, easy supernaturally. I was home, and the altitude flown was 3,000 feet in this Satabria airplane. Physically, weather was good, but in the spirit, 
you know, there was a few severe storms and, and then proof positive, but first, as I got over another highway, one mile east of Cartersville, that would have been I-75, I heard Mr. Bledsoe's voice say, Chad, this is your day. I've closed the highway for you to land to the north. Walk your last mile. Tail wheel time is with you. And at the cockpit, I reduced power and pulled the carburetor heat and descended. And I said, I'm going to wheel land it. That's a procedure in a tail wheel airplane. And so, you know, I prepped it up to do that. And and then I said, I remember to stick it. That's like the airplane, you push the stick right when the main wheels touch down. Just like that, kind of make it stay. I said, I'm going to stick it. And I remember rudders and stick. And so I landed on the highway in this dream. No one anywhere. And I felt the tail wheel touch down, kept it straight, rolled with stop. And when I did, spun the tail wheel and shut down the airplane. Mr. Bledsoe said, leave the plane here, walk your last mile. You'll see your home over the hill. And when I did, the wind picked up and I shouted, the supernatural overrides the natural. I am home. I am a pilot. And I began walking down the hill. That was Cartersville Main Street. I was, in this dream, I was walking down the hill. And then I heard from the same man, Mr. Bledsoe, in my heart, after all of this, remember my name, Mr. Bledsoe, and never forget what I told you. Then real loud, raised his voice and said, Chad, always second on him. Remember it, to fish and to fly. You're home. I woke up. People would be saying, yeah, what could this mean? And that doesn't really too much sense. Well, here we go. I was somewhere and I was told to go to Mr. Bledsoe's house. Well, it came about that Jesus shed his blood to pay for our sins so we could go home. And you know, he bled for us. Bled so, so much, you know, for all of us. I heard that phrase, you know, at times, and a change in the weather simply means spiritual circumstances. And it said, go to Mr. Bledsoe's house. A house is a body, and Jesus shed his blood so we can go to heaven, or go to Jesus' house, and remember the second awning yeah, the second covenant or the new covenant. You know, Old Testament, New Testament. Remember the second covenant, the covenant of Jesus Christ, and an awning, you know, covered the whole world, not just one little area. And I said, oh, those two awnings, you know, that were sitting on the ground, and the voice said again, and it wasn't the second awning covering the area, but the one sitting on the ground, the second one I came to. And you know, Jesus chose himself to be put down for our sin and rose on the third day, and my sin is horrible. I don't deserve to go to heaven. I deserve to go to hell, and I know that I deserve that. Because I have done nothing good in my own sight and I know I haven't done anything good in my own heart. And you know, I feel real bad about it. And, and I saw the two aluminum awnings laying on the ground. I lifted up the second one I came to. I saw a water well under it. That would be the Holy Spirit usually is water. And you know, a well. And a voice said, look behind you, there'll be a fishing pole. You know, go win souls for Jesus Christ like the other dream. And I looked and there wasn't. I dropped bait down and began catching 
crappie. It means go pursue the Holy Spirit and receive from Him so you can have the stuff to go win souls for Jesus Christ. That's fishing. And I began catching crappie and man came outside and he said, I'm Mr. Bledsoe. Again, Jesus shed His blood. And I was told that you were coming. And you know, like I said earlier, in another one, you were known before you were born, Jeremiah 1.5. And you know, he asked me, are they biting? I was catching fish as fast as I could throw it in. You know, pointing to that's how fast Jesus wants to win souls and to be served. And, and less than 10 minutes, I caught 30 crappie. 10 is perfect divine order, and 30 has to do with the blood he shed. And the man said, Remember, now on these words, second owning or second covenant, the new covenant. And it's under the new covenant or second owning always and everything else led up to it. And Mr. Bledsoe said, enjoy your fish. Well, when you go to heaven, the souls that you won, they'll be there. And that's what it means, enjoy your fish. Sounds kind of weird, but things aren't what they seem. And, and then he said, I hope you enjoyed fishing in the water well. The man said, Chad, so been wanting to go to Georgia. See, I was in Oklahoma at the time. Home is where the heart is. I grew up in Georgia. And heaven is the big picture of home. And it's like... You know, pursuing spiritually how to get to heaven in the big picture here. And the when you remembered it, I'm it. You know, the Holy Spirit was the breath, the wind. And then it says, I will show you something else, but beforehand, out of practice, will come to mind. The flesh doesn't believe that it can get the assignment done of Jesus Christ and I'm sorry yeah that I have sinned I have sinned and I have fallen short of his glory and missed the mark so terribly and feel bad about it out of practice simply means the natural thoughts of the flesh you know that naturally would feel that the assignment he gives you is out of reach and too hard to do. Yeah, I was looking for where we was at and said that will come to mind and it, it matters not. Meaning Jesus paid it all. Still the second owning it comes forth. And we walked to another building about 200 yards away I saw a highway. You know, God is the way that's up high. And I saw the highway and beside it there was no traffic. Representative of thoughts in your mind, a lot of traffic, you know, jamming up your spiritual walk, the highway. And just long and straight. Straight is the path and narrow is the path that leads to life eternal. So there you have it, a long straight road with standard road markings. Mr. Bledsoe said, Chad, this is your highway. That just was, you know, him communicating that he had died, you know, for me so I could pursue the highway. And then he said, it has your name on it. Jesus paid when he broke his body for my sin and I absolutely don't deserve that. And then he said, I'm about to open up this building. Gird up your emotions. Get ready. And 
like gird up your loins, get ready the Bible set like a pointer of where it was coming from. That it could be coming, you know, from the Lord and have to judge it according to what the Bible says. And so he said, gird up your, your emotions, you're getting ready, Go, you're going home. Heaven is home. The man said, before I slide the door back and reveal the truth, don't doubt the emotion. Just saying like, you know it's common to struggle with doubt. Which I have since I've had this. I've sinned against God and I've doubted. And I'll be honest about it, I've sinned. And then he said, ready as yours. And he slid the door back. I saw a Satabria sitting there. And you know, when you look at it the other way, when they had the rapture, you know, it go up in the sky and it'll be aerobatic. That's kind of funny. Instantly I said, not a problem. And you know, that's because Jesus paid it all, not a problem. And back to the occurrence, years back, I missed your blood, so remember it. It's ready. And out of practice isn't the problem, meaning that the Holy Spirit will help you, basically. And to go to Georgia, which is a big picture of going home. And then it said, save the last mile. And the Bible says the person go one mile, go two with them, or something like that. Let's walk your extra mile, or go twain to help them out. Then it was like a strong spiritual wind. Instantly all of it come back. You know, the supernatural power of God that Jesus paid for. I took off and I said it's easy. I haven't landed. And you know, an airplane, like I've said, represents overcoming the cares of this world and the gravity of hell and everything pulling us down. You know, I took off easy. That was because Jesus' yoke was easy. And then I was home. The altitude was 3,000 feet. Physically good weather. The circumstances, because he paid debt, were in good standing. And as I got over another highway, the interstate highway over there in this dream, a mile east of Cartersville, I heard Mr. Bledsoe's voice say, Chad, this is your day. Meaning I had a 360 day, you know, it was pointing to a 360 day time, you know, to go do the prophetic work and that the debts had been paid by Jesus, but again, I've sinned and I've doubted. And I know I've sinned and doubt. And be honest with everybody about it. And then he said, I have closed the highway for you to land to the north. So there's always a lot of traffic on the highway. That thoughts, you know, the dream. You know, trouble on the highway and Jesus paid again for our sins so we could get home and not have things interfering with us. And in the cockpit, I reduced the power, pulled the carburetor heat, and descended, and I said, I'm well landing it. You know, stick the airplane like I showed you, and use the rudders, you know, to guide the plane you know, once it's on the ground. A uh, tailwheel airplane, you know, is big on this end and little on this end and sits down. But when you're going, that thing can swap ends on you like that. That's what that's about. So I felt the tailwheel touch down, kept it straight, rolled to a stop, and after that, I swung the tail around and shut down the airplane. And Mr. Bledsoe said, leave the plane here, walk your last mile. 
you'll see your home over the hill. Well, you know, a hill represents a high place. And you know, of worship, you should worship, you know, the Lord. You know, heaven's your home. You'll see your home right over the hill. And when I did, the wind picked up. Yeah, the rapture's a windstorm like I have out there in the other stuff. Second Kings 2, verse 1, I think, was an... Yeah, it's a windstorm. and felt the wind pick up. And I shouted, The supernatural override the natural. I am home by the supernatural power of Jesus Christ to get you home to heaven, which I absolutely do not deserve to go to. I deserve to go the other way because I have done him a horrible job of service and I have failed in my words and know that I had no goodness within me spiritually and I admit it and that's true and I felt so wretched and I'm just confessing that and I wish I could have served the Lord better and I failed Him terribly and I admit it. And then, after I said, I am home, I said, I am a pilot, which meant that in the future I would come to interpret these dreams and hopefully it would guide somebody the right way. I began walking down the hill and then I heard from the man in my heart after all of this, Remember my name, Mr. Bledsoe, and never forget what I told you. Then real, real loud raised his voice and said, Chad, always second on him. So always remember the new covenant of Jesus Christ. And the first covenant was the law of Moses and promised land and all those things and he said, remember it to fish and to fly your home. Remember it to win souls and then to supernaturally go to heaven. Fish and fly your home slash heaven. I woke up. Hope you enjoyed Mr. Bledsoe because Jesus bled so much for us all so we could go to heaven. Remember him today and thank him for that. Hope you enjoyed this and hope it helped you.